Hello friends, Neil here, EMF Safety Zone channel. This is about the third time I'm doing this video. I just cannot seem to get it right. I would like to give you my opinions about two of the best meters you can own. And I'll tell you why. So first of all, to start off, this is the Safe and Sound Pro 2. This is the Safe and Sound Classic 2. There's so many meters on the market, it can be very confusing for people. And as you know, I recommend products that I either design myself or that I use myself professionally. I personally would not be without these meters. I carry them in my car, carry them in my backpack all the time. Now I have some notes to my left, which probably is your right, but I'm gonna be looking at my notes because I cannot memorize all this material and pull it off by heart. Um, these are extremely sensitive, extremely accurate meters, and they are made in Canada and in Silicon Valley. Uh, the, the meters are an absolute must-have for people in these times of the global proliferation of wireless radiation. Wow, I can't believe I got that out. The global proliferation of wireless radiation. Amazing. We cannot see microwave radiation. It is invisible. With a microwave meter, it's no longer invisible. So it is easier to find safer places to live and to work. Without a meter, we don't know what we're reacting to, why we're reacting, why we're having moods, why we're having headaches, why we have health issues. A microwave meter reveals what is going on in any environment. It's a real eye-opener. It's, it's literally like having a seen eye dog for a blind person because basically we are blind to microwave radiation. The meters measure from 200 megahertz to 8 gigahertz and this is an excellent range for these meters. Not every meter you can buy has that range. So again 200 megahertz to 8 gigahertz and this is going to cover the frequency range for microwave ovens, uh, cell phones, cell towers, Bluetooth devices, some airport and military radar, uh, cordless phones, almost any wireless device you can think of, these meters will cover that spectrum. Now, I know that a lot of you are thinking, okay, well, what about 5G? 5G at this time is still using 3G and 4G frequency bands. So these meters will measure 5G. 5G up to 8 gigahertz. Now, when the 5G protocol gets deployed that's using 20 gigahertz, 40 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz, yes, we're all going to need more expensive meters and different meters to measure that high in the frequency band. But for right now, relatively speaking, at this time on the planet, these two are excellent. Just looking at my notes. So yes, we can go on Amazon and we can find meters for $99, $100, $120, microwave meters that is, and any beginner is going to think, oh, that's great, I got a microwave meter for 100 bucks." It's not as great as it sounds and I don't want to bash any products here. I'm just trying to be honest and precise with my information. Usually at $100, you're getting a Chinese-made meter that will probably lack some decent calibration and quality. You don't really get a decent microwave meter at a hundred bucks. Uh, you can take your chances, but I would suggest against it. Uh, people also like tri-field meters, which means a single meter that measures microwave, electric, and magnetic fields. It, it seems really convenient to have one of these meters, but I've checked most of them. And sometimes with a meter that measures three different electromagnetic fields, you'll get decent readings on the microwave, but then the calibration is, is way off or not sensitive enough for the electric or magnetic fields. Sometimes the meter will measure the electric fields just fine, but isn't sensitive enough for the microwave. And unless you understand the specifications, 
most of us just buy meters and don't know what we're getting. So once again, I just really stand behind these meters. And that is for a, a very specific purpose. Okay, I'm, I'm skipping ahead of myself on notes. I'm going to back up just a little bit. What's the difference between the Safe and Sound Pro 2 and the Safe and Sound Classic? If a person wants... I'm going to turn this on here. I don't have any wireless in my office, so the meter is obviously at the very bottom, which is, which is very rare to see that. And you can see this one booting up. They're both just measuring almost nothing. So why somebody would want the Safe and Sound Pro 2 is it's the best meter. It's very professional. If you're doing professional EMF consulting or remediation, you would want a meter like this. If you're trying to impress the teachers at your kid's school so you can try to tell them that there's too much wireless exposure, you would want a meter like this that's a little more impressive. So this will show you peak signal strength, peak hold, and average power density with numerical values. It's very precise. All right. This is $399 worth every penny. If you don't want to spend that much money, the Safe and Sound Classic is $169. It's just as sensitive as the more expensive meter and just as accurate, but it's more of an entry-level detector where it's going to show you the readings with the LED light and the graph. And then on the back of the meter, it gives you the suggestions of, I can't tell if that's focusing or not. It gives you the suggestions of what's a concern, no concern, extreme concern. And this meter does the same thing. So these are not difficult to use at all, even for a beginner. Uh, all right, so I explained the difference between the two meters. And let me explain, oh, I'll do my best on this. These meters are calibrated according to building biology standards for human exposure levels. And this is, this is what makes these meters unique, extremely unique, because I'm going to look at my notes here. Again, I'm going to read my notes. These are calibrated according to the more accurate and holistic exposure levels suggested by building biologists. So these meters provide you with an understanding of exposure levels based on how most human beings react to microwave exposure. Now, this is opposed to the insanely high exposure standards set by the FCC or other government agencies that basically tell you you can have safe exposure standards that are so much higher that are almost irrelevant and dangerous. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I'm going to read my notes. The FCC standards, in the case of cellular and cell site transmitters, the FCC's radio frequency exposure guidelines recommend a maximum permissible exposure to the general public of approximately 580 microwatts per square centimeter. All right. These meters use the conversion, which is exactly the same except a few decimal point difference. These meters use the conversion of microwatts per square meter, which I'm more familiar with. 580 microwatts per square centimeter, which is considered a safe human exposure level, converts into 5 million 800,000 microwatts per square meter. Basically what this is saying is the FCC and other government agencies consider it safe for people to be exposed to almost 6 million microwatts per square meter. However, myself, other professionals, building biologists who are more holistically oriented are well aware that human beings are reacting to and feeling exposure levels, no joke, at like 10 to 15 to 20 microwatts per square meter and even lower. 
Do you, do you realize, I, I hope I said it clearly, do you realize what I just said? The FCC will tell you you can be exposed to 5,800,000 microwatts per square meter as a safe exposure level for non-ionizing radiation, when really the more up-to-date research from independent scientists and researchers and doctors is finding that people are, re are responding and reacting biologically to about 10 microwatts per square meter of non-ionizing radiation. This is sheer insanity. My point though, is that these meters are calibrated for human biological exposure standards based on building biology suggestions. I'm trying not to get too complex, but the outdated information that most scientists or physicists are spouting off. They don't know what they're talking about. And yes, I'm sorry for being arrogant, but a lot of physicists and researchers who think they understand this are saying, oh, well, non-ionizing radiation doesn't have the power to break genetic bonds. It's not genotoxic. They're completely wrong. Independent scientists and doctors and researchers who are not paid by the telecom companies have found absolutely proven beyond debate that even low levels of non-ionizing radiation will break genetic bonds, which means it's genotoxic, which means it's carcinogenic. So for me, when I go into an environment and this meter is showing you even five or 10 or 15 or 20 microwatts per square meter, I may spend a little time there if I have to, but it's no place I'm gonna live or work. Now that's just me, that's my opinion. All right, it looks like I covered most of my notes. So, because people are responding to the non-thermal or non-heating effects of non-ionizing radiation, and the old safety standards really are not valid anymore, this is why I suggest owning meters that are calibrated according to human biological standards. And again, this gives you a little graph on the back to let you know what you're looking at when the meter is registering on the front. When people buy these meters from me, I provide an 11 page training report and some cheat notes that you put on the back of the meter that explain exactly what you're looking at. But even without those cheat notes, the meter still shows you perfectly and shows you on the front here, no concern. I don't know if it's focusing right up here. It says um, no concern, concern, extreme, something like that. I don't have my reading glasses on. Anyways, these meters come in little hard shell zipper cases. I can't recommend them highly enough. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it.